Thanks, Tim. A question I get a lot is what exactly does travel insurance cover? And if you take a trip overseas, what kind of insurance do you need? That's something that's not necessarily one size fits all. And when somebody says they need travel insurance, they're typically referring to one of two different types of policies, and it might be a good idea to have both. So I'll explain the differences real quickly. The first type of travel insurance that exists is travel insurance that you might be thinking of when most people say the words travel insurance, and it's the coverage that covers if your bags get lost, if you get sick the day before you're supposed to leave on a trip and you can't go, the airline goes out of business, the cruise ship needs repairs and can't take off for your trip, and you know, any one of those situations, you lose your deposit, you have some sort of a financial consequence of that. Those are all things that a typical travel insurance policy will cover. And if you've paid deposits and you have a, a vacation that's pricey, it's a really good idea to be able to get that. The one thing I would mention when it comes to travel insurance is typically when you're buying it, there's an option called cancel for any reason. And it's definitely uh, pricey. If you add this coverage to your policy, it's going to increase the pricing typically anywhere from 30 to 40%. But again, the name of that special coverage was cancel for any reason. And that's exactly what the coverage is for. And so that could be a way to get coverage for, say, COVID, for instance, when without that, most policies are going to exclude COVID. So that's the first type of coverage. The second type of coverage is international medical care. So that's a whole different bucket. It's a whole different can of worms, if you will. If you travel to another country, whether it be Mexico or Switzerland or part of Europe or wherever it is, in most cases, your U.S. medical insurance policy is not going to cover you. Or if there's coverage, it's going to be really limited. As you can imagine, if you walk into a doctor's office in Rome and show them your Anthem Blue Cross card, they're probably not going to know what to do with it. <laughs> they're not going to be able to file a claim. It just doesn't mean anything. So international medical coverage is exactly that. It pays cash if you need medical attention in another country. And probably more importantly, it's going to pay to evacuate you whether it be a, via air transportation on a plane or a helicopter or an ambulance, um, you know, road ambulance, whatever it is, it'll pay for that transportation and also coordinate it. Because I'm assuming if you were in a condition that you needed to get evacuated from a country medically, you're probably not in a condition to be able to call around to see exactly how that works. So having an international medical policy will coordinate those things as well. If you're doing a trip for more than a week or two especially, that's a really good thing to think about because Things happen on vacation, doing hobbies you don't typically do or eating food you don't typically eat. So that's a good idea to look into also. So those are the two policies that you want to take a look at when you take a trip. The last thing I'll mention is uh, you definitely want to go ahead and Google the Department of State um, travel advisories for the country that you're going to just to take a look at what the latest is in regards to traveling to that country. Is it safe? Is it recommended? Is there anything else you need to worry about? Uh, that should definitely be at the top of your list as well. That's all I got for you today. Have a great rest of the day.